Hey guys, welcome back to Bones Custom Bikes. Today we are working on this here, Ninja 1000. And if you can't tell by seeing, let me get my leg out of the way, she needs tires. These are not actually drag slicks. These are road tires and they are bald. So, ooh, we got some new rubber. Let's put it on and I'll show you how. And that'll be what we're gonna do today. So, stay tuned. So the obvious first thing we need to do is get the wheel off the bike. I've already got, if you can see it right there, I've already got the bike up on the center stand. So, you know, she's spinning free. Uh, the buddy of mine, customer, client, whatever, friend, he also wants a new chain and sprocket. So that kind of works out. While we have the wheel off, we're going to replace that chain and sprocket. Now, I've got plenty of videos that show how to do that. So I probably won't show that process. Um, you've seen plenty of videos of how to take this wheel off, so in Movie Magic, I'll have the wheel off. Ready? One, two, three. Movie Magic. That's a wheel is off. So, like I said, he wants the sprockets replaced. This one isn't terrible. Um, I mean, I'll probably give it back to him to keep as a spare. The teeth are still in pretty good shape, but if he wants to replace it, we'll do it. Let's uh, move over to the bench and we'll talk about getting this tire off. Okay, so... This little piece of equipment is a tire changer, size so bead breaker. It's like 50 bucks at Harbor Freight. Uh, it's not the best thing in the market, obviously, but it'll get the job done. So we got this center post here. We're gonna get the tire on that. I like to start with the drive sprocket down so I don't cut the crap out of myself on the sprocket. We're just gonna pass it through there. It comes with a washer and then a wing nut. If I can get the wing nut on. All right, and she's secure enough. So the next thing we need to do is we need to get all the air out of the tire. So every tire has a Schrader valve. That's the valve for the tire. Um, and we just need to get the air out of it. So there's a couple ways you can do that. Easiest way is with a valve core removal tool. So let's see if I have mine in here still been a little while since I've done tires. Oh no! Well, I've lost my core removal tool, so I'm gonna need to go get a new one of those. But anything that fits inside that valve will work. I just got a little uh, drill bit here. And if you hear the air coming out, you're doing it right. So we're just going to do this until we've got all the air out of the tire. All right, we went ahead and got all the air out. Next thing we need to do is break the bead. So when a tire seats, it sits into this gold part of the rim. Obviously, not every rim is gold. But that's called the bead. It locks in, and that's what actually secures the tire. So in order to get this tire off, we have to break that bead. And all we're doing is we're basically unsnapping the tire from the rim. So that's why we have this lever here. So we're just gonna simply kind of match it up, get it on the tire and then push. Get the size right. There we go. She is on there. So sometimes it's good to kind of work around. So we're gonna move the tire a little bit. And then just kind of work it as we go around. So once you get it going, it pretty much comes off the rest of the way by hand. And once you get that one side, you just gotta flip it over and do the other. There 
Now this process is the same for tube tires as far as breaking the bead. Tube tires don't always have as tight of a bead just because they're relying on the pressure from the inner tube to hold them in um, and to seal it. So let's get this other side done. All right, so now that we have both beads broken off the tire, we're gonna go ahead and start working the tire off the rim. So I like to secure it down to the stand again. So we'll get this side back on top. And there's a couple ways to really do this. Everyone's got their own method. Um, obviously they make machines that will remove the tire. I don't have a couple thousand dollars to do that. So this is gonna be kind of your home method of doing it. The most important takeaway is we always wanna protect the rim. So we don't wanna go, you know, gouging that rim with our tool. So I like to throw a rag down underneath my tool and then get that, that tire off. So we're gonna use basically just a pry bar. And we use, you know, a short and a long one. And then of course our rag to protect the rim. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and we're gonna get this pry bar in between the rim and the tire. Just like that. And then we're gonna get our rag and pinch that in there, protect the rim. And we're just gonna pry the tire up and off. I can tell this one's gonna be a pain in the butt. It's got a tall rim. So basically you just get it in there, you work it off and do that all the way around. Once you get it started again, once you get that initial lip up and over, it's way easy. And again, if you don't have the tools like that are specifically designed for this, it can be a bit of a job. But once you get that first bead off, it comes off super easy the rest of the way. Like you pretty much just get it with your hands once you get this first side off. So you can see there's our, there's our rim, there's our tire. We'll let it kind of sink down into the middle here. And then Yeah, this has a tall, tall rim. Sometimes you can get it to roll off, other times you gotta pry it. So we'll pry this other side off. So we pried it off just a little bit, kind of get in there and work it off and then boom, tire. So, Let's talk about how to put the new one back on. So we'll get our rim mounted back up here again. We can get our washer lined up. Boop. And let's go get our new tire. So whenever you get your new tire, especially if it's a used tire, uh, this one is actually brand new, is you always want to inspect it. So look at it, make sure there's nothing in it. Make sure you don't see any defects from the factory because it would really, really not be fun to get it all the way on and realize that it's not gonna be a good tire. Make sure you've got the right size. So we're gonna compare off what we got. The old one is a 180 by 55 ZR17. So that's talking about 180 is the width the 55 is talking about the height or the aspect ratio of the tire. And then the ZR17 is talking about the rim size. So that's a 180-55 R17. And this is the same thing. The next thing we're looking at is direction. So a lot of tires are designed to only spin in one direction. Obviously if you're going backwards, that's fine. But spin at speed in one direction. So we're gonna look at the direction this one has. So there's an arrow right here. I don't know if you can see that arrow saying that it is designed to spin this way. So we need to make sure that we install it correctly. 
So we know that on this motorcycle, our uh, chain drive is on the left-hand side of the bike. So that puts our brake on the right-hand side. So if we've got the brake facing up right now, then we know that this tire needs to go on this wheel like that. Like that. But there's other things we gotta do. So in prep to mount the new tire, there's two things I like to do. First, I like to clean the rim. This makes sure there's not gonna be any contaminants or anything like that. That's gonna kind of get in our way. It'll help us find also find if there's any burrs in the rim. Like there's a little bit of a scratch right there. Looks like it hit a curb at some point. Because obviously we don't want to damage our bead when we go to put it on. So we'll do this bottom side too. And this is just simple degreaser, nothing crazy. Cool. Next thing I want to do is I want to lubricate the tire. So we decided that it's going to go on in, shoot, did we forget? Let's see. Rotation. Arrows that way. Yep, this way. Okay. So next thing I like to do is lubricate the tire. And all we're going to do to do that, to do that is just some dish soap. Doesn't have to be Dawn, but I like Dawn. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take the side that's going on first, and we're gonna take our dish soap, and we're just going to kind of lay a little bead on it. So just, just around if it drips, that's okay. And the reason I like using dish soap is because it just washes off. Some people will use actual like lubricant and I don't like that because it doesn't wash off. So it collects dirt and nastiness all on your tire. Whereas dish soap, the first time you get it wet or if you wash it when you're done, it washes right off. And believe it or not, this dish soap is great lubricant for the tires. So we'll get that rubbed in and then we'll get her mounted. So in getting this first side mounted, I always like to just kind of take it out of the mounting stand or the bead breaker or whatever you want to call it and just kind of stand it up and just drop this rim in so we're going to kind of lean the tire against our leg again making sure we have the right direction and just drop it in just like that and we get a good side started on it like you can see i've got just about half of it already in there and then we'll lay it down and just kind of work it around and it should go right in. This uh, dish soap we put on it is great lube. So if you want to, you can actually take a little bit more and just kind of hit this tire bead. I really get that worked in there. And then just kind of, boom, there it is. That first side, like I said, super easy. The next side, not so much. So if you sit and watch me do this side, it's gonna be like a 35 minute process here. It's not easy, but I'll kind of show you the basics of what to do. So again, we wanna get our dish soap and lube the bead. Get a good amount on there. Just dish soap, so it won't hurt, and it's Dawn, so it's good for the environment. So get it real nice and slippery. I and mean, if it's dripping, you can wipe it off. You know, just have yourself a little rag. And we're gonna kinda do what we did with the other side. We're gonna start with just one kind of piece of it. So we'll get it dipped down. And as you can see, I've got the rim right here. And then I'm just gonna kinda take my hands and go in this motion and work it in. So just kinda working it around as I go. And kind of, you know, suck the tire in so that these walls kind of go in. 
And then once you reach the point where you can no longer do it with your hands, just kind of put a knee on it to lock it in. And this is where you're gonna to need to get your pry bars and just kind of work it on. Now, of course, if you're gonna use your pry bars, be gentle with the rim. We don't wanna destroy the rim. But you shouldn't need too much. So just a pry bar this size, you just come in here, you know, find that, that rim, flip your pry bar over, and just work that bead on. Just like that. Again, being careful with the rim. And we're just gonna basically do that on each side. So we'll get our other pry bar here. And we're just gonna alternate. So we'll kind of go doop, 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 until we're all the way around. So we just did that size, now let's do this one. Just like that. And you can leave that pry bar there to lock it in or it'll fall out. And you're just gonna work it around. So we'll go to time lapse and I'll show you how to do it. So it's on. Not an incredibly technical process, just a lot of work. Definitely way easier if you have yourself a little machine. But I'll show you one more trick before we go. And then we gotta do the front tire, but it's the same process. So hold on. So now that we got the tire mounted, as you can see, the bead is still not set on either side. So I'm sure you've all seen the videos on the YouTubes or the Facebooks or the Instagrams or whatever, where people spray like ether or starting fluid into it and then poof. We don't do that because, you know, as a fireman, it's just not safe. So we're gonna do it the right way. The easiest way to set a bead is just by inflating it with air and filling it until it sets. Now the problem lies is that because this bead isn't set, it's gonna leak out. So what we need to do is we need to cinch that tire down the rim. And what better way to do that than with a ratchet strap. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ratchet strap and we're going to wrap it around the tire and then cinch the tire to the rim and then fill her up. So let's get our ratchet strap wrapped around it. Oh, and this is scientifically proven for all those who are skeptics. Bunga and I, the science guy, approved. So you want to make sure that that ratchet strap is pretty much centered on the on the wheel. And then once you got it centered and tight, I just pull your slack out of it. Of course, this bottom side isn't centered on the tire. All right. Once you get it centered, just ratchet it down. So all you're doing is you're just squeezing that tire real tight down the rim. And then you'll see that once we go to fill it, it should fill with no problems. So let's fill her up. Now we're not actually gonna fill it in this step. We're just getting the beads uh, situated. So what you'll see is it'll go pop real loud and that's that bead sitting. So let's check it out. There it is. Big loud bang. And it looks like we still need to seat the bead down on this side. 
you see down here, it hasn't quite seated in yet. So let me run this compressor and we'll get some more air in it. Let's get this bottom bead set. Ah, you see that one's kind of squished in there still. So when it's real squished like that, you can kind of bounce it and that'll help it break loose a little bit. But ultimately it just needs that bead set. So let's uh let's get that one set next. So same thing, we're just gonna dump some air into it until it pops. And of course when I say pop, I don't mean pop, but Always keep your hands and uh, eyes and everything away from that because sometimes it blows dust. There it is. All right. So the beat is set. So now we can take our ratchet strap off. And then my chuck's leaking. Okay, and then we're gonna fill it. And I mean, that's easy enough. I'm sure y'all know how to fill a tire, but look for the pressure ratings. Also on the tire, it should say, here we go. Nope, well, I can't find it right now, but it's on here. But always look for your pressure ratings and fill it accordingly. But that's all I got for you, friends. The front tire is going to get changed too, and it's the exact same process. So if you follow this, you can do a front tire. I hope this was helpful. I know it wasn't super thorough, but it's just a quick way of changing a tire. So I hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And as always, stay riding, friends.